Hello everyone, this is Skarzig, and welcome back to another episode of Duelist. Um, I know it's been a while, a very long while, but we do have the new generals uh, added to the game very recently, and, you know, I was just so excited I had to record, found myself with some, uh, some time to record, um, but I do apologize for, you know, the lack of content, but we're going to jump right into it today, because we've got some Eggmar on deck, and this is, for those of you who have followed me for a while, know one of my favorite archetypes that, you know, just didn't have enough support to really do anything uh, in the meta. And before Ragnara the Relentless came out and was added to the game, I had a deck already built and then just slotted him right into it as soon as the... Uh, as soon as the general became available. And this is a change. This is a changed up version of that original deck after I did a bunch of testing on stream. So if you look at it here, um, the we've got the golem package, of course, with Metallurgist, Lava Slasher, Rage Binder. Um, Rage Binder is a rebirth minion, of course. Uh, Metallurgist just gives us a nice early game card, allows you to potentially ramp into Lava Slasher. It's one of the strongest plays Magmar can do. Um, Furthermore, if you're going second, I've done the Metallurgist Rage Binder opener uh, several times because when you play the Metallurgist, it drops the cost of Rage Binder down to two mana. So it's like doing a double two drop opening, except one of your two drops is incredibly powerful. Um, we've got a couple spell jammers in the deck, of course, because uh, Egg Magmar is um, tends to flood the board, needs to usually jump through some hoops, do some combos in order to get their synergy and damage to proc properly. Um, we do run out of cards, so the spell jammers are nice. I am hoping that with the upcoming expansion, uh, Egg Magmar gets maybe some synergistic card draw built in as well. But for now, the, the spell jammers get us through. Um, you'll notice also, um, I kind of glossed over it, you'll notice the cryptographers in the deck. And uh, the reason for that is we did need a little bit more early game um, with, you know, the Metallurgist and the Young Silhar. That's only six two-mana minions, so often you are going to be missing your, your opening play if you're going first. And what the Cryptographer does is because of the way it accelerates the timer on your Bloodbound spell, you're going to be laying more of those Ripper eggs, which we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit later because those are incredibly powerful. It's, it's, like, it's almost like when Reva opens up with the Cryptographer and you know that you have to start worrying about Heart Seekers way sooner than what you might be prepared for. And that's what Cryptographer allows. Um, we only have two copies because we just want it in the early, like, first couple turns of the game. Or in the late game, we might be able to uh, do Bloodbound Spell into Cryptographer into Bloodbound Spell to lay two eggs. And then hatch them with a Warren Kerr. Or just in the mid-game when our opponent might not be able to deal with both eggs. So basically, the Cryptographer just allows us to put more pressure on the opponent, to put it in a nutshell. Um, and one interesting thing that I had considered with this deck list um, was Veteran Silithar versus Thunderhorn. And I know that a lot of you are probably laughing that I would even give it any thought. But the fact that um, Veteran Silithar can trade into larger minions and, you know, leaves that egg behind, you know, is has been uh, pretty good for me in a few matchups. Uh, where, especially like against Vitruvian and stuff, where they have to use some very key uh, removal, very key uh, resources in order to get that extra ping of damage um, against the egg. I think the potential synergy that Veteran Silithar has to be rehatched by Wild and Scepter, by Morin Kerr, perhaps by Egg Morph, uh, makes it, you know, just viable enough that I'd rather run it over Silithar. Um, excuse me, Thunderhorn. But, of course, for any of you who would like to try this deck, I welcome you to put in Thunderhorn over Veteran Silithar. And, you know, eight or nine times out of ten, the Thunderhorn's going to be a better play. Um, the Wild Inceptors are in there just for cheeky rehatch combos. And it's there as a combo enabler for the Ripper. Um, the Dreadnoughts are fine as well. You have to remember to have the Dreadnought in play before um, you cast your Egg. That's going to be the big thing, too, because um, it's only eggs that appear after the Dreadnought's already in play that you get that buff. And so, ooh, we're against Sibbins. So this uh, this is actually one of the developers, a Magmar main. Uh, so we'll, it's interesting that he's not playing the new general. Uh, but you can see he's got the 25 Magmar minions. So we get to show him what we got. Um, I forgot to mention that going second, 
uh, you can do Cryptographer Propagate Rage turn one, which looks pretty good because we've got um, three, four, five, six, and then we can just sit on this more and cur to potentially hatch a uh, an egg or like rehatch veteran Silithar or something like that. So I'm going to keep this. Now, um, we have a little bit of chance to talk about the, the Ripper, the Propagate Rage Bloodbound spell that uh, lays that egg. Um, yeah, we'll just do this. We'll do uh, Cryptographer here and Propagate Rage here. Um, and yeah, like I said, I'll keep. But um, the Ripper is a 3-1 Celerity Rebirth minion. It's it's like Rex. Um, and the only reason Rex wasn't really played in Eggmar decks was because it's a battle pet, and even if you rehatch it, it still will only move and act at the very beginning of your turn during like that battle pet step of action. Um, so you couldn't get any combo potential out of Rex's 3-1 aggressive body. And with the Ripper, you can. And so if your opponent leaves the Ripper up, you know, you can you can do all kinds of silly stuff to them. And what's nice about getting this opening is that we're able to threaten to ramp to here and we're threatening to ramp here. Ooh, he's running the Lava Lance. So Lava Lance is a spell that is very good. You deal two damage to a minion. It's a nice just one mana ping something, which Magmar really likes to have uh, just to, you know, keep up with backline threats, that sort of thing. But uh, the way Lava Lance works now, uh, with Propagate Rage, you're basically making it into a 2-mana deal 4 pretty consistently. And that allows you to control even bigger backline threats or to deal damage to a large minion. Uh, Lava Lance can't go face, of course. You know that I'm a fan of Lucent Beam, which is, exists in like a similar conditional space, but can go face. But uh, Lava Lance is just there purely for control, and we can see that it's very good there. Sybin's oh, probably aware of the power of Ragnar right now and opting to just keep my my eggs under control and so this is really isn't looking very good for us right now because he was able to answer my play so cleanly because now he can just simply ramp to five mana pretty easily and then lava slash or whatever I play um, so I guess I need to just fall back We'll play the uh, Veteran Silithar. We can get away with uh, with playing it here. Basically, we need it so that he can't just Cryptographer. Excuse me, he can't just Lava Slasher the Veteran Silithar and kill the egg. And so this is, of course, one of those situations where if I just dropped a Thunderhorn down, it threatens his board a lot more. But we do have more incur coming up, so maybe we can do something cheeky with the veteran Silithar. Having the more incur, uh, bumping us up to five attack to potentially take out this healing mystic is kind of good. Ooh, Decimus. So he's just going to back off here. Now, a Lava Lance of my own would be amazing to answer the Decimus, so that's what I'm going to try to get my hands on here. We get Propagate Rage. The, remember, the Cryptographer accelerated our timer. So we theoretically can um, we can move on to the Mana Tile, Propagate Rage to play an egg here, and then Lava Slash or the Decimus, actually. That's really good for us. Um, I guess I can just make this trade. I'll replace one Greater Fortitude, I think. Alright, looks like that's our play. Um, our opponent's going to be on 5 mana next turn, so we don't really need to play around War Beast too hard. I suppose I could play uh, Lava Slasher up here just so that Young Silithar can't hit it, and that might, you know, keep it around a bit longer play the veteran silithar back here so now you can see we've got the the ripper egg and a veteran silithar egg now that he needs to worry about and this is kind of what makes um i think i want to keep my hp up because he's playing decimus so if he's got like that bursty combo i just want to 
I just want to keep my HP as high as possible. I've got Rage Binders and stuff for healing, but nothing beyond that. And so, rage, because Rage Binders conditional, you know, that's unreliable heal, I basically have to play as though I'm not going to get any heal. So he's taking out the Ripper Egg. That's smart. Hmm. But we do get the Veteran Silithar back. So, you know, this is this is pretty good. Because, I mean, if this was a Thunderhorn, I still get to punch the Healing Mystic. Um, and then it's just sitting there as a 4-2. Ooh, Blood Tear. Wow, he's got a lot of anti-egg tech. Well, I want to... This isn't, like, anti-egg tech, of course. This is just, um... Oh, snap. Uh, Magmar likes to have pings in their deck to deal with, with backline threats. And so it just so happens to control eggs. Uh, very unfortunate here uh, with the Decimus because I get to War Beast. Um, and then Lava Slasher and my general kill clear the young Silithar egg. So this is a huge uh, tempo swing for us. Um, and I want to move the Lava Slasher here. And... Hmm. I'll step one up so that if he War Beasts, he can't War Beast me and my War Beast. Um, he'll just do me and the Lava Slasher, and he has to find two more damage for this. Uh, so that seems good. I'm wondering if I want to keep this hand, because um, we're, we're working towards our combo now, uh, which I have I don't think I've talked about yet. Um, you do Propagate Rage, you hatch it immediately with, like, Morin Kerr Egg Morph, and then you Greater Fortitude, the Ripper, and it's a 10 damage burst combo. And that's what we're going to be looking to do to our opponent here. He burns my Veteran Silithar. Nice. And then a tiger. Okay. That's spicy. So we can tell that our opponent has like a lot of burst. A lot of damage. A lot of combo pieces here. Hmm. We don't have a good way to deal with uh, with the young Silithar and its egg. We can still propagate. We can still do that combo though. Where like we equip more and cur. And then uh, Propagate Rage. And then that way the Ripper can kill the young Silithar Egg. And then um, maybe punch Starhorn. Or I'll probably just leave it alive. That's probably better because if I leave it alive, I miss three damage now. But then I have a minion that's going to take two separate hits to kill. Which he might not be able to do. Um, yeah, so we're just going to go for this now. We'll move here. Propagate Rage. And uh, we'll equip more incur. And like like I said, we can do like the greater fortitude combo. Um, but I want to. I think I want to save that for burst. So we're just going to uh, kill the chrysalis egg, and then move our little guy down here. And so now I've got a more incur equipped. And uh, potential to rehatch the Ripper a couple times. And that's going to be a lot of burst. Seven mana. What's he doing? Flash Crygon, maybe. Nope. Ooh, we got him. Yeah, once, you, once you're in that position, it's, it's, it's tricky. Because he was low on cards. Um, he was low on cards. And so that's how... That's how Egg Magmar kills you, is that because every single minion that they play almost requires that additional resource, that additional ping of damage, you end up just, like, draining them when they're trying to keep your board under control until eventually you get things to stick. And that's basically, like, the main strategy that I go for in most of my decks, where you run your opponent out of answers, take over the board, and you win. Um, so right here we've got um, the same opening, right, with Cryptographer. Um, cryptographer, Propagate Rage. Um, the difference here is that if our opponent opens up with like a Golem Metallurgist or something, we can do Cryptographer on the Mana Tile, Propagate Rage, and then Lava Lance onto his 2-drop. Um, I'm going to replace Dreadnought and I think War Beast as well, because we do have potential to maybe get Metallurgist Rage Binder or something like that. Okay, okay. So we'll see what our opponent opens up with. 
Nothing. Okay, well, if that's the case, um, I think I'm just going to be aggressive and do Rage Binder on the tile. And this is, and again, this is when I first started experimenting with this deck. This was the problem I was sort of running into, is uh, I was like, oh, I'll just... I'll just have, like, a bunch of late-game, like, egg stuff. I was running, like, a singleton of uh, Chrysalis Burst and Cascading Rebirth and, like, some cheeky stuff like that. But uh, we ended up cutting those for Cryptographer, and that really evens out our early game. You know, decreasing the chances that we skip our turn one play and giving us, like, as I mentioned before, a lot more pressure. I think that opening up with the Cryptographer last game and getting, you know, those additional rippers pressuring our opponent that we might otherwise not have had is what might have allowed us to pull into that game. And also the uh, the Propagate Rage and the Lava Slasher to answer the Decimus and the Mechanta for the second Decimus. Um, typically, it's, it's considered very greedy to uh, play a Decimus outside of combo like that. But I suppose, I don't know. Saibin probably is more experienced in this matchup by, you know, playing, you know, in developing all these cards and like doing balance and stuff so maybe he realized that in this that particular matchup which i don't know right exactly how it plays out maybe he's like i have to be greedy and aggressive in order to win oh no that's that's oh i thought he was um i thought he was gonna punch this and then ping it but he just said he's just softening it up um if i replace into like a wild and scepter or something that'd be really That'd be really hilarious. Um, but I can hit him and then heal back up with my Rage Binder. Um, if he had summoned something, then I would probably do Cryptographer so that I can Lava Lance. But I can save Cryptographer. Hmm... I guess we'll just get some minions on the board, right? Like, the veteran Silithar up. Get the young Silithar. Um, I'm gonna respect... I'm gonna respect Flash Warbeast. And kind of play a bit wide. Because even though Flash Warbeast doesn't blow us out super hard... Um, because he saw us like de deal with all the eggs and stuff but this way we just you know keep more pressure on the board falcon seal how good how good what if i just let him get a 223 right now or i punched him and he gets like a like if i went all in right now you know let me see that'd be four five six seven eight nine ten eleven damage and then he gets a two whatever from the falcon seal hatching that doesn't seem very good i think that's like horrendously slow especially if i replace an amor and kerr um then i can just hit him for a lot of damage and of course i have the lava lance i'm just thinking like do i want to save that card and just let him get like a big tanky dude that i don't care about war beast um so we can pull the young silithar back and uh, ramp into war beast if we want But we can just uh, we can just do this instead. Punch. We play the Rage Binder to get our HP back. And now we're gonna play into the War Beast because you know we're the best. Now that I think about it, he uh, I was playing around Flash War Beast last last turn. I don't know if he actually has one or not. But yeah, I was hoping to like replace into Warbird or something. But look, a 212, a four mana 212 um, is probably really, really good in Lionar because of Divine Bond. But um, the fact that I can just say, okay, what, what do you do now? Ooh, Dire Tide Frenzy, that's sexy. So you can punch the egg. He has to move out of the way. Greater Fortitude, ooh, punished. Okay. That's really cool. That's really cool. But these minions have rebirth. So 
he doesn't have the additional pings to take all of them out. And the Ripper is going to hatch. Because he had to step away to make room for Valkanu to get in there to Dire Tide, he's still in range of the Ripper. And so he's got a he's got a lava lance, think or like a blood tear or something. Lava lance, it's a spell, because he's not targeting from a minion. Um but he's thinking about what he wants to kill. Oh, natural selection. You know, I completely discounted natural selection because typically in Eggmar, your eggs make it so clunky a lot of the time. Where, like, I love to have a ripper egg cooking. So, yeah, I can do um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve with the, uh, with the mechanter. Yep. So that's uh, that's how it goes, and also like if I had gotten like greater fortitude or something, or like, and then that would just be like extra damage with the wild and scepter. Oh, but this deck has been doing me proud. Has been absolutely doing me proud. Um, it's such a shame that our opponent got um, such a slow start. Pumping up the Valkanu like that, even though I figured that a 212 wasn't that good, but Greater Fortitude Dire Tide was actually like really silly. If he had if he had a board and then played Valknu Seal into that, and I had to choose between answering Valknu Seal or like cleaning uh clearing like a uh, a key minion, then that could have been like, you know, a really dastardly game for me. But maybe he just got unlucky. A lot of people are experimenting right now. I'm glad that he is using the Valknu Seal. Because um, that is a fun card. I used it a long time ago in like a hybrid uh, boss smash deck. Um, but through all the different hoops that you have to jump through to make Valknu work as boss, like after you get all of your, your stacks and everything, it's like by then you probably should just play Krygon. Um, Valknu has potential to go off a little bit earlier though. But it's kind of whatever. Because like Valknu seal into egg morph to instantly hatch it is eight mana and Krygon is nine mana and you can use flash reincarnation to bring out Krygon on seven mana so it's it's whatever hmm so Cassava oh man I'm glad that I get to show off this matchup in the video because this matchup is absolutely abysmal let me tell you um I can open up Ruth Cryptographer Ripper which is nice and then I have greater fortitude to go on to it um, it's just that Cassiva controls your eggs like it's nothing, and she has a bunch of healing, so she just outvalues you in the, uh, later stages of the game. This deck has very little healing in it, like I mentioned before, so you just get mauled if, uh, she's super aggressive, and you really can't stop, uh, Spectral Revenants with this list either, because they feast on your eggs and, you know, any of your other minions, because she can punch something if it has rebirth, um, the Spectral Revenant just turns it into an egg, and then she pings the egg. It's it's tragic. Um, I'm wondering if I keep War Beast. No. I, I'm going to replace War Beast because I need something a bit more proactive. Like, the Lava Slasher is nice. Um, this is probably the matchup that you want Thunderhorn instead of Veteran Silithar. Oof. Okay. So, we're going to go for it. Um, so the egg, you know, gets aggro cast of a typically runs fear of darkness and like tigers and stuff. So it's going to be very difficult to actually get eggs to stick. Um, so we'll see how this pans out. Egg morph is good for an insta hatch combo or maybe dealing with desolator, but that's pretty much it. I think that the key for this matchup is probably to try to save up combo pieces and go for, like, a really disgusting uh, Ripper combo to burst out Cassava. That's the only thing that I can think of, but I've yet to draw, like, the, the cards I need. Oh, God. Yeah, so right off the bat, we get the Desolator after the uh, Flameblood Warlock, so that offsets the damage he took from Flameblood. Um, those of you who've watched the stream know that even when I'm not playing Eggmar, when I'm playing any deck, uh, Aggro Cassava really tilts me, especially Desolator. Um, I think I Eggmorph that. Just because she played it so early, um, those repeated procs are just going to burn me out. 
I think that's my best line of play. Um, like, I can Lava Lance it, but then, like, I can't really do anything else after the fact. We'll, uh, we'll Egg Morph it. Um, if I step forward to pop this egg, then Flamebolt Warlock hits me, which is another reason I really dislike this card, um, because it, it just threatens so much damage. But, you know, I just need to run Blood Tears or something, right? Like, I'm just getting punished for not having the proper tech in my deck. I suppose I can step here, so I'm still close to the Mana Tile. This does allow him to do, like, Grasp of Agony on the Cryptographer, though. So you have to do, like, this weird dance with Cassiva where you're, like, sort of close, but, like, still able to be out of range of a lot of things. Um, because the thing about this matchup is that Cassiva can go incredibly aggressive on you, but at any time she wants, can just back off and just wait and burn you down with Desolators and then wait for Spectral Revenants. So it's an aggro deck that also forces you to, to meet it in the middle and fight it out. Um, which, you know, sounds interesting on paper, but in practice it just really goes against how I feel this deck should operate. Yeah, so he's got the Grasp, which is what I was afraid of. Hmm. So I can Lava Slasher the uh, Spelljammer and Punch. I can also propagate Rage, uh, Lava Lance, and then Punch. The problem is that I think that playing Propagate Rage when I'm not going to like instantly hatch it like just gives my opponent creep tiles. Um, so I think the Lava Slasher is the correct play here because um, I can move forward, play Lava Slasher here so Flameboard Warlock doesn't hit me and then uh, do the punch. So the thing here is that Lava Slasher also gets dealt with by, uh, with Punish. But if Lava Slasher can tank the Flame Bud Warlock and I take you know three less damage to my face, then we might be able to hang on. We're just still trying to stabilize, not fall too far behind and uh, you know, get, get combo pieces. Oof, the Spectral Blade. Hmm, there is potential here. Now, he actually did that incorrectly because Spectral Blade's heal only procs when it uh, when it kills something. So he should have hit with the Flame Bolt Warlock first and then punched with the Spectral Blade. But it's not like, it's not like when you're playing Aggro Cassiva you actually need to care about sequencing your plays. And he's holding his um, Abyssal Scar for uh, for Propagate Rage whenever I try to lay an egg. So as I said before, I'm looking for, for like combo pieces. Hmm. My opponent's on six mana next turn. Lava Slasher is definitely the play here. I'm just thinking about uh, how I want to move. Because like, I can step up and be next to the Lava Slasher or step here and play the Lava Slasher. And if I step, if I Lava Slasher here and then step two to the left, that gives Cassava the option to just run this way. And I'm not sure if that's, the, like I said, that's the thing is if she just runs this way and starts doing Desolator stuff, then I have to waste so much time reclosing that distance. So I think that I'm going to actually step up here. Just so that I'm a little bit closer to her. And I really am tempted to propagate rage here. But I, I just have to save it for the combo. Because if I propagate rage then maybe she does like uh, grasp of agony or double grasp on it. And then does abyssal scar like that whole bit. Double spectral blade. Yikes. Is he going to go face here? No, he's gonna he's gonna abyssal scar and uh, kill a lava slasher. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, so um, theoretically I can... Hmm. Let's see. I've got Propagate Rage, Wild and Scepter Greater Fortitude again, which is a 10-mana uh, combo. Um, he just used his uh, Bloodbound spell, so I could potentially uh, Propagate Rage and it would survive. But if he has Grasp of Agony, I'd have to like play really wide so that he doesn't um, Grasp of Agony like Veteran Zillathar and then have it kill the egg. But it, like I said, if I walk all the way here to keep the egg safe and he just walks away, that's incredibly bad for me. But you know what? I think, I think we can risk that play simply because he's going to want to answer the uh the Silithar. and i'll play the metallurgist too just in case i draw a rage binder or something and i can get that extra little bit of healing oh god yeah. so we laid the egg to set up for a burst combo next turn but Because if you can if you can get a Ripper to survive and then hatch, you get potentially add a lot more damage to your combo. So let's so let's think about this. Um, we've got more in Kerr, and we don't have access to Propagate Rage. Oh God, did I mess up? Because I didn't have because I don't have Propagate Rage this turn. If I well. Wouldn't I have just, if I didn't Propagate Rage last turn, then the uh, Spectral Revenant just goes face, and then I wouldn't have enough HP to more incur. I can Egg Morph the, um, the Spectral Revenant. And, uh, kill it. Punch with the veteran Silithar. And then uh Wall and Scepter, the uh, veteran Silithar. Um I'm going to Well he can abyssal scar anyway, so I'm just gonna punch now. Because um, I'm not going to hit with the Metallurgist because I need that to live. Oh, another Revenant. Man. If I had... If I hadn't done that Propagate Rage that turn and he got hit by Spectral Revenant, would I have been able to lethal him? I know that y'all will check the tapes and tell me. Because I would have been able... I wouldn't have been able to use more Incur, I don't think. As um, a hatch mechanism. But I still have the Wild and Scepter available so maybe i could have done propagate rage let me see that would have been no because he probably would have used the spec if he used the spectral revenant to um to hit the veteran silithar and then killed the egg with the spectral blade i still think it's a really bad line for me um i don't know but anyway that just goes to show that even though this deck looks like it performs really really well in a lot of cases Casaba is still there to keep you in check. So thank you for stopping by today, and I will see you next time. You have a good one.